Hello, Warriors. Alexander, how are you? You're the first one today. Hi, Paul. Here you go. Kevin, how are you? Okay. What a week to be a bear. Right? Hi, Kevin. Hey, <coughs> Galaxy, Sa, how are you? To me, this is important. YouTube up. This is important right here for a lot of different markets. Um, you know, started off the beginning of the week talking about how yields on Friday reversed. And I was talking about I'm looking for a new high in yields. We're not there yet. Um, but I talked about how every other market didn't notice what was happening in yields on Monday, on Friday, and Monday they began to care. So you could have been short silver, which was weaker than gold. Gold putting in a decent day. So if you're long the gold, you want this to fail here and make new lows. That's the way I'm positioned. Uh, down about four points on the dollar index. What can I say about the S&Ps? Hi, Sinatra. Uh, we're currently 105 handles under uh, the two-week reversal. And um, pretty good break in a week. Pretty ugly candle. And if we got a sell-off in the dollar again, we should get at least a bear market rally in the S&Ps in the coming days. And who knows with this market, you might even get a new high in S&Ps. I don't think you'll get a new high in NASDAQ. So NASDAQ topped a few weeks before. And even if we did get a new high in S&Ps into month end, I don't think the NASDAQ will. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, VIX actually gapped up. It's kind of a breakaway gap. So, you know, in a week, I think we closed here on uh, Friday, May 7th, that's it. And what a week. Now 30 is a barrier, but I don't, I think it, there's a possibility it could pull back into the 20 range, but then next time you're above this level of 28, you're talking about 40 or so in the S&P. Yeah. And uh, Mira, if you're here, I hope you're safe in Israel. But I went to the door on this. Looks like, you know, our first divergence in SQQQ. Amira asked me what it was down here at 1050. Nothing wrong with 20% in a week. You okay? All right. You know, I'm looking at this. Um, more probable than S and P's in two weeks. I don't know if we're going to be able to rally a thousand points and, you know, Mark may have changed his mind, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people weren't expecting this type of break to maybe the magnitude of it. So we'll see, uh, if that occurs, uh, I think we're at least going to rally. So we'll, we'll take it from there. <clears throat> See if we get an ABC failing rally. But anyway, uh, if you are short, you don't care if there's a rally. You should have gone to the door on partials, on everything. Um, I talked about the end being the preferred long because of rates and the correlation. In fact, uh, the wizard caught it. Okay, believe it's right here. Oh, sorry. Maybe he took it. He may have taken it. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, correction and in, in uptrend. Long, uh, so long US dollar yen. Last night, the oil uh, started to give it up. You know, it didn't close bad. It was, you know, up around here, but now we're back to support. It actually held up the best this week. Right, it's a divergence, right. You so, know, and I would be thinking, Dale, if, uh, yeah. if if risk continues to roll over, uh, I would think that crude oil starts to play a little bit of catch up. You know, I, I I think it's been struggling here around the $65, $66 level. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's at risk of, you know, a pullback. I'm, I don't think that we're yeah. going to see like $20 in crude anytime in the near future, but I wouldn't be surprised to see us back in the 50s here sometime in the very near future. Yeah, I agree, Blake. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes uh, markets can hold up uh, against outside pressures for so long and then it hits a tipping point. So, um, yeah, you could call this a nice little double top here and we start trading back under 64. That's going to measure back towards here, 61 and a half. And of course, uh, we have to talk about the Elon Musk top. Um, yeah, you know, um, so so that's <laughs> it's interesting you bring that up. Uh, first of all, I'm I'm I I'm I'm honestly really I I'm, I think this is pretty pretty crappy just in general and um uh I mean it's 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 a game I mean this the guy is the, the the wealthiest you know person on the face of the planet right now or close to I guess he is now that Jeff Bezos is getting divorced I don't know I know he's up there right. I don't, I don't keep up with that type of thing. It doesn't, you know, I, I, I hear, I see headlines or hear headlines every once in a while. And I don't really, you know, I, I was kind of talking about his appearance on uh, Saturday night live and oh, you're, no, yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, this is the thing that, this is the thing that irritates me more about irritates me about the whole thing. Um, obviously, you know, Bitcoin's been in his, you know, his, uh, his, you know, Tesla's invested in a Bitcoin and blah, blah, blah. And he has really been able to self-promote himself into his positions yeah. and his positions. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what kind of securities, you know, laws is he breaking? I mean, all of, all of them. I, I would think so too. Right. Th then you go on, you know, Saturday night live, uh, you know, you're, you're broadcasting to the public basically, you know, how great cryptocurrencies are and but I, I mean yes he 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 made fun of you know D D dogecoin basically <laughs> but but still i mean you're you're bringing it to the masses and then you know a week later or less than a week later he says how you know you know bitcoin you know it's, it's not going to be supported by tesla look he knew that going into last week this wasn't a last night decision you know what i mean now i, I read a statement like oh we, we're going to be looking for other cryptocurrencies or whatever I, you know after buying all that crypto uh, bitcoin you know for the last whatever you know however long he's been doing it and even though he says his company is not selling any bitcoin how many people knew what he's doing and what he's up to i'm sure a lot of people and if you're wondering why Bitcoin hasn't gone up, man, you know, uh, maybe he was shorting it. Y y no, I, I I doubt that. But look, look, if I was somebody who knew Elon or knew of what he is planning to do or what Tesla is planning to do, I'd be shorting it. I'd have been shorting it. And you know, who's who's going after who for insider information? I mean. You know, I think I think I I actually think the securities industry is way behind the curve here, way behind the curve in what to do with cryptos. And I, I know it's new for a lot of people. And I, I know a lot of people are like, well, what do we you know, but regulations need to come down on this. This is a disaster. Um, uh, anyway, I, I, I but I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's, you know, interesting, <laughs> you know, but wouldn't that be ironic that his appearance maybe on Saturday Night Live, you know, marks the near term top for, you know, the, the crypto market. I mean, and, and S&P's. 
Uh, quite possibly for the S and P. Yeah, right? for, yeah. You know, yeah and time. and and let's talk a little bit about the S and P. Well, first of all, let's let's talk about Bitcoin technically. So, um, you know, Bitcoin has been trading heavy, and I I, I did blog about it about forty minutes before that. Um, you know, before the uh, uh, where wherever I, the chart of the day is here, about forty minutes before um, uh, that article was posted um you know when bitcoin was trading above the channel you know above the channel here before it broke down um then that headline came out but you could tell it was trading really heavy anyway but now that we're kind of moving lower if you look at what i think is key support in bitcoin is going to be this 127 percent extension you guys if you're listening to the morning edge every day as a forex uh, analytics subscriber, then you know that, um, you know, we're talking about the, uh, f- you know, 52,000, 47,000, then 40, you know, three, 44,000, this is breakout point. So that's 127% extension of this last consolidation. So that is going to be, this is where if, if I was a, if I was a Bitcoin bull and I, and I had like a bull bear line. Now, if you guys don't understand what a bull bear line is, let me explain that to you. If it's above this level, you're bullish. If it's below this level, you're bearish. This is what I would consider the bull bear line in, in Bitcoin right now. Okay. Above 43,000 is bullish below 40, you know, 42, 43,000 is bearish. All right, so that's the way I'd be looking at Bitcoin currently. Now let's uh, let's take a look at uh, the dollar. So the dollar, we had this triangle pattern, false breakdown below below here, coming up to this week. Now you got to watch the dollar index because if we take out this downtrend line, you see it right here, this descending trend line, that descending trend line, which would be basically today's highs that would be a bullish reversal. Now, if you don't think that that's even possible or you're wondering if that's even possible, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you guys what uh, I, I had a, I had an email exchange with uh, uh, one of the guys that I um, traded with for several years at, uh, at Gellos. He emailed me yesterday. He's like, Hey Blake, what do you think about the Aussie? And I said, you know, I'm like, man, I, and I, I, gave, I gave him this opinion and let me just explain to you. The Aussie dollar, we had been monitoring it and let me just go ahead and take this. I'm gonna, ch- I'm gonna switch this out just so you guys can see my mindset. And I'm, I've got to assume a lot of folks, their mindset with the Aussie dollar over the last several weeks, right? So, you know, you're, you're dealing with the Aussie and the Aussie has been struggling to make, you know, to, to, to make any gains. And, you know, finally, we see some dislodging of the Aussie dollar as it broke higher. Now, the, the, the reason why that was dangerous when it broke higher, because anybody who was short, like technically that, you know, if you're, if you're a, more of a long-term trader and you're like, I'm just going to stay short as long as we're below the shoulder, you got stopped out. And matter of fact, this probably triggered a lot of people to get long right here above these highs. Cause he emailed me and he, and I hadn't talked to him in a couple of weeks. We, you know, they, they, they've been, uh, they've been kind of quiet as far as currencies go. And I've been kind of quiet too, because I think volatility has been, you know, kind of in the, in the toilet. So, um, you know, when he wrote me, he's like, yeah, I was really looking for an Aussie dollar break higher. Um, and I was, I was pretty bullish. And then all of a sudden, you know, yesterday happened, right? We saw the sell off and I'm like, yeah, I think that caught a lot of people on the long side because you, you had this head and shoulder pattern failed breakout attempt. And then it, you know, well, you know, failed breakdown attempt. Then it got, you know, everybody got bullish and I think it squeezed out a lot of shorts and it got a lot of people long. So yesterday's move lower, I think was a shocker to a lot of people. And, um, you know, so in other words, that that really strong CPI data and the reaction to it was shocking to a lot of people. And now that you've got 
a lot less people short the Aussie dollar, the positioning is more favorable for a move lower, in my opinion. So I, I think we've got to watch the Aussie now. And, and I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm short the Aussie yen from yesterday. If you're a Forex analytics chat room trader, you know that I shorted it yesterday about 60 pips ago. But the Aussie dollar as a, as a whole is, you know, this is where I start looking at these lows and we start breaking below. That low, these previous highs, then we test the uh, uh, 7550, this like the, the actual previous neckline. And if you wanna just forget all this and look at it as a triangle con consolidation, you can do that too. The fact, the fact is, is if we start cracking through these supports, I think it opens the door for a test of the 200 day moving average. Um, hold on really quick. Uh, let me deal with something really quick. Uh, Stelius, I'm going to hook you up right now. Just bear with me. Sorry, guys. I've got to do something. We have one of our guys is out today and he, uh, he is in Europe and he usually does all of our uh, recording. Um, he does all of our, our YouTube, our YouTube streaming and he is out today. So um, Stelios is out there. Hey, Stel, are you around? Or he's like scrambling around. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to bug you now. Um, so the Aussie dollar is we're consolidating here in a triangle. And so I think we're consolidating in a triangle. So if we break this support, that's going to be pretty key on the way down. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I apologize for pausing like that. Um, um, and there you go. So now the Kiwi also, you can see this is a little bit at risk. We've been following this ascending channel that's starting to roll over. And one last thing I want to talk about today is the dollar Canadian. So the dollar Canadian, if you didn't catch yesterday, we had an outside, an outside bullish day and a bullish um, hammer. Now, why is that so important? Why is that so important? Because that was the 2017 low. I was hoping the dollar Canadian would, would have gotten a little bit lower than where we got. We got to 120.50. So I turned around yesterday and I got long. I'm still long a piece of mine at uh, 120.73. That's my open price. That's where I got long the dollar Canadian yesterday. Um, yeah, if you're your your forex analytics chat room, you already know that. But I, I'm I'm long, and I I'm I really would like to actually add to this long position. Um, I'd like to see a break above, yeah, the few day high. So probably back into this channel. So then you get what Dale likes to call the uh, throw over, which happens in opposite too. So if you get a you get to move outside of a channel and then back into a channel. That's called a throw over. Um, you get it on. That's what Dale calls it. You know what I like to call it? What? Dale's throw over. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. For a wonder. <laughs> no. Uh, what? Uh, an, um, one of the this analyst that I like to follow at um, HSBC. He calls it a slingshot trade, but you know, whatever you want to call it, you can call it whatever you, you can. I mean. You, whatever you want to name it, it's basically it's the it's it's very similar to a false breakout, false breakdown, and whenever you get false breakouts, they tend to lead to reversals. And so um, this would be an example of a false breakdown, uh, or Dale's throwover, or slingshot, or you know Dale's ultimate throwover, uh, three drive reversal. I, I don't know. I'm just making up names now, but I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> that this is. This is, uh, this is whatever you want to call it. It's basically a false break. And, and, and on top of it, you got a false breakdown longer term. So again, I, I, I already went long, but it's not a really super aggressive position. I will get more aggressive if I think that something today is happening 
that is really important. Do you know what that last thing I'm going to leave you guys with? Before I let Steve take over here. I'm pretty sure we're about to find out. Damn it, Steve. You ruined it all. You ruined it sure. all. All right. Um, it's the S&P breakdown. I mean, I really was hoping this wouldn't happen. And I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to tell you guys what I told the folks on the daily roundup. If you um, if you read this chart, ah, this chart, um, if, and by the way, if you guys aren't going to Trader Summit every day, you should because it's a good place where you can go read Mark's analysis. Jason San, you know, uh, Boris and Kathy. And, you know, it's a nice place to have just all centralized analysis for you. Just it's easier, right? This, um, this analysis I did a couple of days ago, the S&P grinding higher. This is what I was hoping for. This is what I was hoping for. Okay. Um, now, as I've mentioned to you guys during the week ahead videos and what I, what I was hoping wouldn't happen is happening right now is we're, you know, we reversed and we went back below 4,100 and that, that's great for volatility near term, because if you've, if you haven't noticed the last, you know, 24 hours or whatever, we've, um, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a lot. I got sidetracked there for a second. Um, the one thing that that I think is happening is we're just getting side. We're going to be going sideways, and that's you know we we may have a little bit of volatility right now, but what I was hoping for is more volatility in the future. And 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 having a move that went parabolic and then reversed would solidify the top for a much longer term period of time. So what I mean by that is. If we would have had some sort of explosive blow off top and then reversal, we would see sideways price action probably for, you know, uh, and then you can, you can just figure out how long. I, I mean, I, I would think that we'd be sideways for a good year or two, you know, just, just sideways. Now, why do I want that? Because you and I as traders, we benefit during up and down markets. Trending markets are a much more difficult market for traders to trade because we, as traders, innately like to fade strength by weakness and we look for divergences and correlations and it's easier to trade a trending market. And by the way, the markets tend to trade more than uh, mo most of the time. Like if you had to throw a percentage, throw a percentage on it, I would say like 80 to 85 percent of the time, the markets really just trend sideways. But when you get in these grinding moves, higher or lower, and believe me, they happen lower too, it's it's tough to trade. And then that's what we've found over the last couple of years. Volatility really sinks and, um, you know, to, to historic lows and that low volatility and grinding cessation higher in the markets is tough. So when you get a, a move like this, what had happened yesterday yeah, it's great. Near term, we're we're seeing a tick up in volatility. You, you look at the you look at the VIX, and the VIX has spiked higher. This is part of the conversation I had yesterday, so I'm just gonna um, delete this and show you what I meant by all this. You know, yeah, we've seen a spike up in volatility, but realistically, volatility is gonna go. You know, it's gonna spike up, then down, and then you know, then you know up and then down and it's you know going to grind back down as volatility grinds down as stocks stabilize you know and we instead of going sideways for a long period of time we end up you know pulling back for the for a couple months in the summer and then probably by the end of the year we'll be pushing new all-time highs again oops shit shoot sorry i didn't want to do that um you know we're probably going to damn it i just want to grab this thing there we go you know pull back for a little bit and then grind back to new all-time highs Th that's fine in the near term because we'll see some volatility in the near term but longer term we're just going to be pushing right back at highs again and that to, to me i'd rather not have i'd rather have a explosive move higher 
reversal and, you know, oh, whoops. And I'd rather have a few years of consolidation. And that's what I was hoping would happen. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get it. I just don't think it's going to happen, which is means that, hey, let's, let's play into seasonals. It is May. You sell in May, go away. We're seeing some risk off right now. We'll probably see some further consolidation going into summer. And then once fall hits and we, you know, trade around the 39, 3,800, then we can part, we can target all time highs going into the fall. As long as there's no, you know, black swan events. And obviously you can't account for those. And if you sat here and, and just banked on black swan events all the time, uh, you would constantly lose money. So you can't just assume that, you know, um, yeah. the China. If they uh, happened all the time, they would be they going ha- yeah, black swans. Have- yeah, exactly. So anyway, you guys get what, what I'm saying. And, but I think what's key today is now you just watch the S&P. As long as we stay below that 4110, uh, 4100, 4110 level, I think the risk is that we pull back towards, you know, 4,000, 3,500 over the course of the next couple of weeks. Anyway, we'll, we'll have some short-term spurts and volatility spikes, but, you know, nothing super exciting, I don't think. So, uh, Steve, you have any thoughts? Anything you want to add to, to, to there? As I was saying yesterday in the uh, uh, morning ads, you know, there, there is a good chance, uh, especially as we saw the price action unfold, that the market is going to be affected by uh, the CPI we saw yesterday. Yeah, you, now, were, you didn't think that the market would care much about that, right? Uh, no, uh, that's not the case. I, um, f- you know, my thesis has been and hasn't changed that the market is mispricing things, you know, tremendously. Uh, th- first of all, that is why we have the reaction we had yesterday, because in my opinion, if you ask me, there should be absolutely no surprise by the numbers we got. I mean, we had all the indications there, but the market just didn't want to acknowledge it. Right. So now we got the numbers. And now the market is doing another uh, mistake in mispricing, which is they think that this changes the path forward for the Federal Reserve. I think it doesn't. Unfortunately, I wish it did. But this misconception <clears throat> might keep on going for you know, several days, several weeks. And uh, this is going to uh, be uh, perhaps a catalyst for a counter trend move. Um, so, yes, I do think that the S&P has likely broken down in the short-term charts because in the long-term charts, in order for it to break down, we need to see a lot more happening, right? Yeah. We also see an attempt of the dollar Would to 3,000 do it, Steve? 3,000 do it what? In, in uh, Break the in, trend, S&P. Uh, you know, I think that 3.2 thousand is... If we're talking medium to long term, is yeah, uh, to Blake's megaphone. I mean, that's line. that's a twenty five percent decline from the highs. Yeah, yeah, I'm not implying that this move is going to unfold in a twenty five percent decline, right? I mean, we, we I need to see a lot more before that happens. My yeah. next area of support to begin with yeah. is uh, at, uh, roughly at four thousand. Okay, so hey, just re- really, really, really quick, uh, we have um, producer prices that are coming out today. We got CPI yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, NPPI, producer prices NPPI are coming NPPI out today. right now. And yeah. we, we have unemployment claims, which you know I, I don't really care a whole lot about unemployment claims, um, but unless they're outsized and you know I don't think that they're going to be, but let's, let's watch the PPI numbers since the CPI numbers did move the, day, the, 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 the needle. And I think uh, you know, people might be looking at um, producer prices with a little bit more of a interest today, if you will, right? Like after the move yesterday. Uh, yeah, PPI should always be of interest because PPI is always a leading indicator to CPI. Yes, if the producers are- Because you know, producers will price. always pass on, or almost always pass on um, price increases to, to the consumers, obviously. Yeah, they'll, they'll eat them for so long and then- Exactly, and then they have to pass them through. Eventually <clears throat> they got to pass them through. Uh, so yeah, um, hold on, let's see, we have- precisely 10 minutes so or 10 minutes 10 seconds so heads up for the producer prices uh here they come 
Uh, let's see. Kind of, oh, yeah, you can see double, wow. double the expected. Look at the yeah. US PPI year on year. I mean, I can't, and yeah. we've been, ha we've Steve, been having we're these numbers. We're comparing to last year, which was really low prints in May and June. No, so, yeah. uh, no, um, no disagreement there, there Stelio. Uh, no disagreement whatsoever. But, you know, uh, it, it's been several months that we're getting outsized numbers. And if you combine that with a glimpse of what's happening in commodity prices doesn't look good, does it? Oh, no, absolutely not. Yeah, and so, you know, I'm wondering if equities are going to take notice of this again today. Um, you know, this uh, another day of, 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 you know, just confirming stronger inflation data from a producer level. So, uh, and, and one of the last things I need to mention just before we go, and I'm sorry, I know Steve, I know... Um, Sorry, Steve and Stelios. We'll continue this conversation on the morning edge in 45 minutes. If you know you have to be a Forex Analytics subscriber, then you'll be able to log in right here on the FACE webinar where we cover the bias chart. But I want to bring up one last thing before, before we go. One of the, um, you know, we, we did see Bitcoin slide. Uh, and, and guess what? Uh, you know, there's a lot of institutional money in cryptos now. And I think we got to be really careful because, you know, we've seen Ethereum come off, we've seen Bitcoin come off and, you know, if Bitcoin really starts to move below this, um, you know, below this bull bear line, as we call it with you know, big divergence here, you know, we start getting below 40, 43,000 in Bitcoin. I think we got to watch how that affects risk. You know, I, I think that's always been one of those, you know, one of those uh, it's it's a newer asset where there's a lot of institutional money. Speaking now. of uh, of which, Blake, there is to be mentioned that Bitcoin has uh, during the past several weeks steadily been losing uh, market share, having to do with you know its its capitalization over the whole crypto market. Right, yeah. it, at some point it had reached seventy percent. It's now down to forty five. So you know, um, I don't know how somebody coins. Uh, f yes, that, that's the obvious uh, in interpretation of that, but I don't know uh, uh, what somebody can claim is the deeper interpretation because that is uh, that is the observation clearly. The question is, what are the implications for all the cryptocurrencies with this move? Because anyhow, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Let's not eat up from the interview because yeah, let's, it, let's it is a topic that. of discussion. So I, I just need to mention, Dale, um, hey, if, if, if you guys are, you know, you enjoy what we do here. And remember, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Please appreciate it. Um, Pepperstone Securities, they are one of our webinar sponsors. They And if you live outside of the U.S. or Canada, click here to open an account right on our sponsor page, because this way you can get Forex analytics and be in our community, be in our chat rooms for up to, you know, up to four months. Um, then this is our, this is an example of our chat room. And this is where I got up this morning. Where I said, Hey guys, good morning. That was an hour and 20 minutes ago. And you can see all the chatting that goes on in our chat room. So if you guys want to join our community, I'll see you there. All right, guys. Dale, it's yours. I'll uh, catch you guys in about 45 minutes. Welcome back, Gary Kaltbaum. How are you? Good morning. You got me? You got you, Gary. Uh, are you going to share your screen? Uh, share screen. Yeah. Let's see. So, share. So uh, Gary is a contributor on Fox Business. Uh, are they still putting you on, Gary? Sure Every day there? of the week. Every day, uh, what are you on the Charles Payne show? I am on. I'm on with Neil, Charles, Stuart, Barney, wherever oh, they okay. ask. Okay, okay. Uh, great visibility for you, Gary. So, I mean, let's talk about what's going on. Uh, last time you and I uh, were talking about, you know, how we were entering Goofyville, yeah, and things were, you know, still going up. They continued uh, really. Uh, in the NASDAQ till two, three weeks ago. And the NASDAQ is leading this down just like it led the rally up from the COVID crash. Um, do you think this is uh, just another 
standard two to four uh, percent correction or uh, 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 more meaningful? I'm going to guess more meaningful because underneath the surface, it is so much worse than the indices. Can everybody see my little Twitter feed I'm showing? Yeah, and you're showing the uh, okay. FUD chart. I just want to give you a, a few things here. Uh, this, is your, uh, this is your Fed uh, where their money printing skyrocketing. And my thought process was, boy, are they going to create some damn bubbles on this? And yeah. we'll get to that in a second. And then you have this. This is the Goldman Sachs Non-Profitable Technology Index. Uh, Non-profitable. Uh, and by the way, this is scaled correctly. Uh, then at the same time now, you've got this. This is insider buying or selling a, a skyrocketing yeah, uh, insider selling. And then the, the big guy, in, in my opinion, Who uh, is margin right here. Oh, okay. So let me explain to your ample uh, listeners, margin is your best friend in bull markets. Right. It is a gigantic enemy in bear markets because the first thing that happens is margin has to come off before the real dollars are sold. And I would suggest here what we're seeing a little bit of is this liquidation uh, of, of some margin right now. And one would suggest uh, there may be some time and price to go on this. Um, okay. when, when I say that, uh, you can see my charts now, right? Yep, got it. ASM. When, when, when I say, when I came on last time and was worried about bubbles, uh, and I'm pretty sure, I, you know, I, I mentioned all the time, so I probably mentioned to you guys the SPACs, the no yeah. safe companies, the penny yeah. stocks skyrocketing the 3d stocks marijuana solar cells I, I my, i'm in love with the electric vehicle companies that have never sold an electric vehicle so yeah. what i mean by bubbles bursting here's a spac that has gone from 31 to 7 uh and these were all favorites at the high here's one that went from 46 to 13 this is a yeah. lot that's been going on underneath the surface that's not talked about enough, uh, 13 down to three. Of course, we can talk about uh, one of the outcomes. Here's BlackBerry, 28 to eight, part of the short squeeze. And by the way, to me, that occurs because of the bubbles. Uh, but something happened in the last, I'm going to talk say about 12 weeks ago, is I started noticing that growth names were just gagging. Uh, while... Yeah. While the stuff names, the opening up trade, were getting all the money, they were starting to cripple all kinds of growth names underneath the surface. And we end up with these type of moves here. Uh, Twilio, 457 to 296. That was leading. Uh, FVRR, 336 to 165. Uh, and I'm just going to do a few here. Peloton. And by yeah. the way, if you know what a bull and bear market looks like, a bull market is you're riding up the 50-day. A bear market is you're riding down the 50-day. And every rally into it gets sold off. So this one's kind of classic. Yeah. But there, there nice hundreds, rule. There are hundreds of them. I can go through DocuSign here now. Uh, Etsy, which was at, uh, near highs recently, which is now crumbling. ServiceNow. This is not action in a bull market. Trade desk, they just absolutely murdered uh, and, and again, remember how enamored everybody was with the gambling stocks, the DraftKing, 74 yeah. down to 42. Uh, the Ubers and Lyfts, uh, take a look at what's going on with them now. The solar stocks, I'm just going to do the TAN. Take a look at what a bear market looks like in solar stocks. Remember, bull markets ride up in ascending 50-day, bear markets ride down in descending 50-day. More classic. Uh, I was worried about the asinine. And when I mean asinine, I have used this as a poster child snowflake. At 429 here, it had almost a hundred yeah. billion dollar market cap. And we're talking to a little fundamental valuation here now. Uh, almost a hundred billion dollar market cap with 500 million in sales and lost 500 million dollars. Well, about 60% later, an insider selling like maniacs at the lows. Uh, you, you see what's going on there. And it's not just snow. 
DoorDash, you had to own, you had to own it, 256 to 112. Airbnb, changing the world, 220 to 140. Lemonade, cute name, uh, but uh, 160. <laughs> so, A little too sour for me, that yeah. lemonade. My, huh? point, my point is, is that when I do my scans every night, I'm going through 200 sectors, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 names, every yeah. commodity, yeah. every country, and I build up the weight of the evidence. And all I know is for weeks and weeks and weeks, I've been going on TV and saying I'm a growth stock manager and I own no growth stocks. And, and that speaks for itself. And we can go back further. This was a leader, COUP, uh, 377 to 232, uh, MDB, um, 428 to 251. And here's a poster child to print out all your viewers. This is what a bear market looks like. You top out over time, every rally right into the 50 day as the bear market goes through. And eventually if it bottoms, it'll bottom this way and then start the stair step up. But obviously that hasn't started. So more and more names going by the wayside. Recently they got square. Yeah. And uh, they got PayPal, even though they're changing the world. They got uh, this OKTA classic double top here if it shows up. Uh, and I can just I can go through a thousand names uh, that, that people would be shocked how many there are. Uh, but the Dow's only off a few percent off the highs, the S and P a few percent, and that's because when the market gets defensive, it buys defensive. And that's why you had good money flows into 3M as of recent. The most low beta, mega cap, boring type stuff. And All the reason, defensive in nature. Right. The reason why money flows there is because when things go awry, it's easy to, it's much more liquid to get out of. So the last part of the equation, and this was the amazing part, here's your NASDAQ right here. And this is what is amazing to me. You were on the verge of breaking out right here. Yeah. Even though you had a ton of names down here. And I'm yelling and screaming to my uh, radio people and TV. I just let you know underneath the surface, but we'll stick with the indices. And then something happened. I call it Amazon Day. Amazon gaps up on 215% earnings, 44% yeah. sales, yeah. and croaks. What that did was that gave the cue to all the other stuff uh, that look out. So they started murdering the, the, the uh, lower caps and the mid caps while look what they've done to an Amazon here. But it wasn't just Amazon, Microsoft reports uh, good numbers. Uh, yeah, big gap down, yeah. Apple reverses on their good numbers and that's on the 200 day. Google had got gargantuan numbers. They're finally coming after that. And that's one of the best of the lot here uh, yeah. back yeah. Day. And then That's some other, breed. other bigger names, Adobe, uh, you know, somewat of a holy crap moment, uh, NVIDIA. Again, we're just adding up the weight of the evidence here. Uh, Twitter, they murdered on any little bad news. That's gone. Uh, how about Tesla, uh, the darling, down at the 200 day? And I'll just end this part with Netflix uh, gapping it down. So all this buildup did not start in the last couple of weeks. No. Take time, little by little, piece by piece, inch by inch. Takes uh, time to turn a battleship around, Gary. Got it. And, and I'm saying that so much stuff had been topping over time in growth land. And then there's the other part of the equation here, and it's redemptions. Uh, and look, this is okay. not a rub on this woman. She's been very, very successful. But the ARC funds took in, in here, tens of billions of dollars after a big move. And unfortunately, she keeps buying into uh, a lot of the, uh, what I call, stocks that are done. Buying, yeah. into the, buying into SPACs as they get crushed. Uh, it, buying into uh, money-losing companies. Oh, the and, NFTs are doing, the uh, people that paid a million dollars for the, digital art. Uh, right, if so they the, tried to resell it here, I wonder what they'd get. Yeah, so the, 
the redemptions will end up feeding on itself also. And let me just state for the record, I do not know where it stops or where it ends. I just know you're in this bearish phase for all this stuff right now. Bounces in these big bearish phases for these names are vicious, can be fruitful if you catch them right, but usually they're fleeting and usually suck you in at the most inopportune time, like this rally into the 50 day and then bury you soon after. So my thought process is just be careful. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, the Dow S&P types, uh, finally, they got after those in the last couple of days. And that's because that's what normally happens as you go through a process. Uh, I suspect there's probably more downside. I worry that the Fed has lost control. They've had their way for years where every time they talked easier money or did easier money, the markets, uh, you know, reacted well. But maybe they have lost control because you can see what's happening with inflation and interest rates. And yeah. I don't yeah. think they're predicting that inflation is transitory. I think they're on their knees now praying it's transitory. Uh, and, and look, they may be right. But if that's the case, that's only because we're going to go into another recession. And that's not good either. So I'm being very careful. I own no growth stocks. I sold my Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan yesterday. At the, at the highs, fortunately, only because uh, they usually come get them all in a defensive market. And again, yeah, what well, they say, Gary, that you could own the best stock in a bad market and it doesn't matter. Right. And we also recognize it's had a big move. Yeah. So, we're just, so are you like 100% cash, Gary? Uh, we, yeah, to, to that point. But we, we'll trade around and you're going to get moves today. I just noticed. And we always have these linchpin stocks that we follow in semiconductors, AS, ASML. So that one finally got hit. It's up, I think, 15 or 18 today. Uh, LAM Research, a very important semi. That's up seven or eight. But you can see, uh, you know, you have a lot of near-term trend changes, e even in the best stuff. And I can't help, I have to show the socks because I've been saying for a very long time, 90 some odd percent of the time, just follow the socks and it'll tell you everything you need to know about markets. And you can just see, and right here, when it was at the 50 day, I got on my radio show and, and listed 25 semiconductor stocks that were already down here in advance of the socks break in the 50 day. And guess what? They led down. So let me ask you this, Gary, um, yeah. you know, you've been around for a while and yeah. we have these kind of sell-offs. There used to be a flight to quality. Right. Um, the bonds uh, actually led this decline. Uh, last Friday, I was saying the most unnoticeable move was the recovery in yields after a shocking NFP number and that the markets will recognize it sooner or later. And it was sooner. It was this week. And uh, were you surprised that there was really nowhere to hide um during this week's sell-off uh, wasn't bonds wasn't gold it's kind of like do you notice that it's all one market and there's not that much um differentiation even between asset classes that everything goes up together it's like blowing wow. air into the balloon and everything comes down together just different magnitudes this may sound crazy uh, I think some people sold off stocks and bought Dogecoin after it was up a bazillion percent, thinking it's a safe haven. Yeah, that, yeah. We'll I, I'm not that. making that up. I, I People come up to me that don't know me. Hey, I see on Fox, I like what you do. I just bought Dogecoin yesterday. I'm going, do you know it's already up 7 billion percent? Oh, yeah, yeah. but it's going higher. Um, yeah. By the way, here's the, the TLT, which is the 20 year index. And again, right. another mm -hmm. classic bear market. In yeah. that it broke the 50 day and all the way down, except for a little bit right here, uh, below the 50 day as it comes down, and, and maybe another new leg down, probably oversold near term. So maybe rates uh, come down a little. But this is a trend in rates uh, on the long end right now. And uh, that doesn't help the Fed because the Fed is, is if the Fed is ever forced to tighten. Uh, in a market that's addicted 1 million percent to easy money. Oh, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin says, all hell going to break loose. 
So that's another thing I'm watching closely. Uh, and, and again, he, uh, just the technicals, here's your bond market here, uh, you know, crumbling all the way down as the 50 day comes down. So not the, another classic bear market. So uh, that will have to change. Uh, yeah, that's a, it, the a main legacy market that took out the COVID crash lows because uh, when they came in and jawbone corporate bonds and everything during the corporate uh, during the COVID crash, uh, bonds rallied, but since have taken out the COVID lows. Not yeah, many it, other markets have. Some of the things I'm watching also right now is I got to watch some of these junk bonds. Look what happened yesterday. Uh, and wow. This is just one, it's one name. Uh, here's the thing. If the junk bonds start getting hit hard also, that yeah. can be uh, trouble because the market follows that a lot. So there are a lot of different things. How about corporates, guys... Gare? You have a look on oh, corporates? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, because look, I'm of the belief, uh, here's your investment grade. Wow, uh, they've been trending down for a while. Yeah. They look ugly. ugly. Look, I'm a big believer that this Fed has distorted all price and yield. I've been writing up for a couple of years that because I've had, a, I used to have a great um, uh, uh, income business. I don't have an income business now because there are bonds yielding uh, uh, not, that used to yield 9% only yielding five and bonds that used to yield five yielding two. Uh, it's that distorted because they're in there buying them all up. Uh, they don't care about whether they lose money or not. They have no risk uh, with their money because they're using conjured up money. And that's why I showed those charts first of what the Fed has done. I'm just worried they've distorted the whole freaking thing. And uh, I'm hoping this, uh, what I call the melt up, does not turn into a uh, meltdown because I think we have one gargantuan one sided trade. Just so you know, you saw a gargantuan one sided trade on GameStop on the yeah. short side, mm -hmm. and you saw a gargantuan one sided trade on the long side on that hedge fund that just blew up, and both of them were leveraged up the wazoo. And I'm just worried. I showed you the margin chart, that's leverage. So. Yeah. I, I, I've got my eyes as wide open as possible. My ears as wide open as possible. I will adhere to whatever the market dictates to me. I will not dictate to the market, but all these things put together, it's an uh-oh moment and uh, we'll play it as it comes. And I heard you talking about Bitcoin earlier. I think you guys were right. Uh, that's a topping process in the, in the GBTC. Yeah. And okay. if, it, if this gets taken out right here, uh, we'll see you down here. So just a, a word to the wise. And I do believe it has to do with the fact that uh, you have been cannibalized by other coins, uh, but also it already had a big run. So just a word to the wise, be careful on some of this stuff. Because when Coinbase came out, and I'm on TV saying, you buy it 4.30, you're taking risk. Yeah. Um, there was no... I was watching people. There was no anticipation that something can go wrong with the coins. No anticipation that Coinbase came out after six and seven fold moves in, in, in Bitcoin in a year and the do this other coins that, that are now coming out. So just words to the wise, know where something has come from. And as I say, quite sarcastically all the time, if something is up tenfold, in the last uh, 10 weeks, you may want to know there's some risk, you know, and, and just so you know, look what they did here to some SPACs here. You know, yeah. if you don't know there's risk after this move here, we really can't help you. Uh, so just know where something came from. If it looks like an Eiffel Tower, the left side of an Eiffel Tower, you, you better know uh, you can be in trouble when it ends. Here's Tilray, the second Eiffel Tower Tilray's ever had. It did one, I believe, at late 17. If you don't know, this is a classic Qualcomm from 1999. You better go back and, and study the charts of climactic buying uh, because that's where your most risk is. And there's just a lot of these names, my friend. So Yeah, so a lot of the blow-off was... Uh in February, and then we distributed. Uh, Gary, you've showed a lot of individual issues that have lost 30%, 40%. 80. Um, 80. <laughs> uh, I, I actually think that even if there is, a, uh, they could resurrect uh, another rally in the S&Ps into month yeah. end, that, uh, you know, 3,000 
is my target in the S and P's, um, it, and that doesn't sound as unreasonable um, with what you've seen with individual issues. Because if they can do it, why can't the averages do it? Yeah. Well, the thought process is that under the weight of a weakening market, they eventually get uh, the things that hold up best. Uh, and maybe we started to see that in the last couple of days. I'm uncertain. How I play this is I walk in this morning and I recognize, hey, the ice has gotten thinner. They started getting after the things that had hold up be- uh, that have been holding up best like uh, They hit the um, financials. They reversed them yesterday. The commodities, which have been strong as all heck. And we'll start watching them closely. I will tell you the, a lot of this growth stuff, stuff is beyond oversold here. So I would not be surprised to get a two, 3% rally in the NASDAQ, but that would just be part of the process. So another bear just, market rally. I'd, I'd be careful. And, and yeah, yeah. as far as 3000, that would be a normal uh, bear market going down uh, 25%. And, and by the way, that would be garden variety. And in case your listeners don't know, bear markets do happen every now and then. I know that's hard to fathom. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. we had the crash, which was more event driven, but bear markets do happen. And what they do is they flush out uh, the valuations of the prior bull. They work things off and they set up for another bull market is really your best friend. And the problem is the Fed has prevented it with their easy money. And that's why I worry the next real bear market is going to be in the, like another 08 or 2000, 2003, because they just refuse to let free price discovery be free price discovery. And therein lies my ultimate worry that the markets shoot the middle finger back at these people that have played God. You're um, a real uh, f- uh, fan of the Fed, gear. I think they're a nightmare. Do you think we should uh, abolish the Fed? Uh, I think we should abolish the people at the Fed. You know, if you can get a vocal type in there. And, and the unfortunate thing, we have somebody running the Fed and now the Treasury Secretary that yeah. used to run the Fed. They are the two most important money and market people in the world. And, and with all due respect and nothing personal, this is pure business. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. Whenever they tell you what's going on, they're just reporting what happened. And it's like me telling you that Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. They can't tell you what's going on later. They didn't predict this uh, inflation spike at all. But we did yeah. because we, we go out. We don't have butlers buying our food and chauffeurs up. Uh, Good point. Yeah. With gas. Yeah. We go out and see, holy crap, I'm at Home Depot. And the guy says to me, did you see this? This was four bucks uh, nine months ago. It's now eight. A little piece yeah. of lumber. Yeah. So uh, I, I think they're just behind the curve and uh, – I think they'll probably end up doing something stupid. If, by the way, if they ease now, I think the market would crack. Uh, that's what I think they're behind what the market's saying. Uh, in the past, when they ease, the market just shoots up. That's the David, David Tepper trade. Uh, but I, I, I think they may have lost that. We'll see. I, again, I just take things day by day. I don't let my headlights get past me. I am thrilled with myself as a growth stock manager. I've owned no growth stocks during this carnage. And I'm going to be patient, wait for them to set up for another leg to the upside, not buy into the bounces, which will be uh, sharp, quick, make you feel good, suck you in after the bounce and bury you. And uh, we'll just take our time and keep our capital near the high water mark. When you're bearish, you ever take some positions to reflect that mindset, oh, like SQQ? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, it's so tough to take individual names because you wake up in the morning and you don't know what's going to gap up 30. Yeah. Uh, so bearish like, ETFs. Yeah. But also I showed you the roadmap of, uh, again, the, this, the, the, your short selling points are here and here yeah. right into the 50 day. This is classic. I, I have printed out 5,000 charts going back decades of charts that look exactly like this and the bond market here, that these are classic. Look how it cannot get above the 50 day this whole time. Then it tanks, finally gets above it a wee bit, but it lasts two days and tanking again. This is the roadmap of bear markets. It plays out all the time. And I just love when people say this stuff doesn't work, when I can show them with a picture, picture proof 
on this. And it's never perfectly looking like something like this, but most often it sure does look like this. And uh, okay, I think okay. a, I think a lot of things just may have topped out like the Amazons and stuff and maybe just starting the bear process. And if that's the case, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 have more to go. Okay. Well, you know, Gary, uh, uh, you're successful because you're a hard worker. I mean, if you're doing that many scans a day, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I found the people that are the best are the people that work the hardest. And uh, there is no secret besides hard work and living through adversity. That's a secret. Um, and I appreciate you coming here and sharing your views and uh, hope that uh, you're able to capitalize on this and uh, very interesting talk about uh, you've been around long enough to know what happens when gravity takes hold in a market. So uh, I studied Bill O'Neill and Stan Weinstein and yeah. I take all ego and bias out of things I see and uh, the book Pit Pitbull by Marty Schwartz once said, all I do is look in a photo album for, for familiar faces each day. And uh, that's all we try to do here. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. We drown out all opinion because Wall Street will always be bullish in bear markets and uh, just put our head down and do the best we can. And when we're wrong, be wrong small and be wrong, uh, and be wrong fast. And when we're right, try to ride them out as far as they can go. Gary Kalpam, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, my trading warrior brother. Good hunting uh, till we talk again. Appreciate your time. Time is our most valuable currency. Thanks for spending a little bit with us today, Gary. And good health to you, most importantly. It is. Thank you so much. And Gary, uh, best way for people to follow you? Uh, GaryK.com. And I'm on Fox Business or Fox News every day. Uh, but okay. GaryK.com is the website. We post the radio show there each day and with a lot of notes. Uh, and the vitamins you take. Uh, that too. The high <laughs> energy. Will, uh, will you ship me some of these, uh, bro? Uh, they're great. You're, you're very high energy and uh, uh, I wish I was. <laughs> uh, anyway. Don't need vitamins. You ju I just enjoy what we do. All right. Love your work. And it's a play. I, I enjoy the game too, Gary. I could tell you do. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Let's do it again if you're up to it. And Anytime. Good hunting. Take care. All right. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being with us. I hope you enjoyed Gary and uh, a lot of passion in there for what Gary does. And you could join the crew in 13 minutes for the morning edge. Uh, uh, you know, good hunting out there. Be careful. Don't get FOMO. If you didn't plan the trade uh, over the weekend, wait, you know, and don't try and make your, your week on a Friday. We'll see everyone to wrap it. Adios. Good hunting. And oh yeah, Shabbat Shalom, Amira. And don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, I do believe this hot spot in Israel, uh, what's happening right now, and the fact that Hamas made a statement that uh, they were thanking Iran for sending them upgraded missiles to uh, balance out the difference uh, in power between Israel and the Palestinians. And uh, our view on Iran to be looking out for that. And, uh, you know, right when we think we were going to have a break from COVID and enjoy our summers, Biden, every president is tested early on in their term. Here you go, Joe. Let's see what you do with it. So adios, everyone. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And we'll see everyone tomorrow to wrap up the week. Adios. <laughs>